Astrolux has gotten into the multiple LED flood light and secondary LEDs market with the MF01 Mini I have here before me. It's available with five body colors, three material choices, and three different LED tints, with one of those being a high CRI option. Thanks to Banggood for sending this to me to review and for providing a discount to my viewers. Make sure to check the description below if you're interested in this 5500 lumen light. Here is the packaging the light comes in. Pretty standard Astrolux Fair. It's this white box with a silver picture of the light on it. Pretty plain otherwise. You can see here I have a clear anodized light in 5000 Kelvin. Accessories you get with this light. Here's the bag. You get a couple extra o-rings in there and a basic lanyard. You get this nice manual. This is a, a good manual for um, Astrolux here. It's in a couple different languages and this does have Android firmware on it. So it goes into that pretty decently too. Then you get a couple different uh, clear plastic tubes here. These are for the different batteries. This light can run 26650s. 21700s and 18650s and run the 18650 size and the 21700 size you do need these clear plastic spacers. The light is USB rechargeable, USB-C in fact, but it does not come with a cable. Um, and this is kind of important to note because this light does require USB-A to C cable to charge. So construction, this light is made from aluminum and is clear anodized. They offer a variety of colors, including black, olive green, a tan gold, and gray. They also offer a special edition in brass and copper, and then an aluminum light with a copper uh, center here. Machining here is average. It's nothing amazing, but nothing bad either. Um, on the back here, you can see a few tool marks. It's, again, nothing bad, but it's not amazing either. For the price, that's not a bad thing. You've got a nicely greased threads here. They are kind of squarish cut. The tail cap here is dual spring, quite strong. And inside there, you can see the uh, head of the light. I'm using this right now with a 21700, so I've got this spacer on there. Fits pretty nice in here, no problems there. The light tail stands pretty well on the back. Um, as we saw here, there is a lanyard hole on the back as well. Um, rattle is a little bit of a problem if the light's horizontal with your smaller batteries. It's not a problem with the uh, 26650, so that's something to keep in mind. The uh, body tube here has got some diamond knurling on it with a little bit of uh, grooves milled in just to give it a little style. It's not aggressive. It feels good in the hand, but uh, nothing crazy. At the head here, grows in diameter. We've got some um, cooling fins milled in place here, also for style. Then we've got the button. It is a smoked silicon button. There are LEDs underneath here. You can't see with my video lights on, but it does glow lightly at night. On the back here, you've got your USB charging port with that silicon cover. It doesn't, it kind of strains this tab a little bit on there. I had no problem putting a cable in here to charge. USB-C, not a problem. It does come on when charging as well. The bezel on my light here is aluminum. However, stainless steel one is available. It is a little different fish and finish. This one might be steel, I'm not 100% sure. If we disassemble the light, looking at the head, very easy to do on this one. You've got an anti-reflective coated glass in there with an O-ring. Then you've got the optic here. Um, pretty standard like Carrillo style optics, seven LEDs on there. And then here is the daughter board on the inside. This is two circuit boards. You've got your main LED board at the bottom, and then you've got your secondary board on the top. But uh, you probably can't see my video lights really well, so I'll roll in some still pictures. You've got three secondary LED colors on here. You've got a green on the outside, a blue kind of next, and then you've got a pinky purple in the center of that. When screwed together, the light is IPX7 water rated, and I had no issues running it under a stream of water. So this is primarily a 26650 light, but other size batteries can be run. I measured the whole light at 112 millimeters, minimum diameter at the body at 33, maximum diameter at the head at 44 millimeters, weight with the 21700 battery installed was, was 254.6 grams. Here the light is compared to the Firefly EO7 that I reviewed oh, a month or two ago and it's a similar light it's got seven emitters as well and secondary LEDs it's smaller in the body tube because it's designed on to run on that 21700 battery they're both aluminum and diameters are very close with the mini being just a hair shorter that said this uh, fireflies can't run those three battery sizes 
and the secondaries are much brighter here in only one color. So as I was saying before, this MF01 Mini is using seven SST20 LEDs. My example is running the 5000 uh, Calvin tint, and there's a 4000 and a 6500 also available. If you did get it in the 4000 Calvin tint, there is a high CRI option and not so much on the other tints. The SST20s have a bit of a reputation for a green tint at lower powers. And I definitely see that here. Hard to tell with my video lights, but we see it in our night shots as well. The Android firmware is great, but that also means those LEDs can be driven pretty low. And this is where you get that green that comes out. At the higher powers, the tint's not a problem and is pretty pleasing to me. It's no Nisha 219, but it's not bad either. The beam's fairly floody with ever so hot spot in the center um, for a floodlight and it throws decently well. Okay, so I've cut some of my lights here and you can see the secondary LEDs in here. I've also got the optic off. On the outside you've got the green LEDs, then in the next end you've got blue, and then the very center is a kind of a pink, a purple. If I put the optic in here you can see those blues are the ones that come out the most. And as you turn the light you kind of get star effect of the other LEDs. These are very small LEDs in there and they don't put out a very much light, which is a little unfortunate because I like that effect. But you can also see these three pots in here here, here, and here. And those are used to adjust the overall brightness of those LEDs. You can't get them all to be super bright. You've got a current limit that everything's limited to, but uh, it does give you some ability to adjust the secondaries, maybe if you only wanted blue or only green or whatever. So that's fun. Here I've got the Astrolux MF01 Mini. And if you see anything about this light, you can see the different auxiliary LEDs here. Pretty neat. I've got the pink kind of turned down and I know this is out of focus so I'll do better in my other shots but I want to show you what this was like at night. This is running the SST LEDs and in the lowest mode here um, we get about a lumen or so and I can ramp up. This is that great ramping firmware that we know and love. Ramp up all the way and this is just high. Obviously way too close. Here we are back in our normal setting. We can ramp up again. This is considered high. You can see it throws pretty well. I bump up to turbo. This is up to 6100 lumens. This is using a high amperage 21700 at the moment. Nice and a lot of light here. This has got lights, got decent amount of mass to it too, so heat isn't as big a problem as on the Firefly Z07 that I've tested earlier. But then I can ramp up. We can see it's ramped down just a little bit there and show you how fast ramping is. That's what's so great about that Andrel firmware. Fast ramping. So in my left hand, I've got the Fireflies E07. This is running the Nisha LEDs, producing about 3,100 lumens or so. There is max turbo lumens. This is seven LEDs. See the beam pattern here is a little bit more focused, a uh, little bit less spotty. You can see the color rendering is just, to me, it's just a little bit more um, neutral, a little bit more pleasant, and it stays pleasant throughout the range here. Back to the Mini here, we can see at lower powers things are just a little bit more green. You can see it's a little bit more of a flood to the beam, but that's on high. This is that momentary turbo on the Fireflies, the 07, and here is turbo on the Astrolux Mini. So you can tell you know, they're relatively close for the numbers, but we can tell the Astrolux is brighter and it's lumens wise, it's about double. So here's the Astrolux and turbo and here is the, and here is the um, Fireflies in turbo as well. Both great lights. If we look at secondary on the Astrolux, it's brighter, only one color. And then here on the um, Astrolux, we get three colors, green, blue, and red, and quite a bit more, but dimmer. I did my original runtime test here with this Keep Power uh, 26650 battery here. Good batteries. Since this light was originally designed for use with those, it does fit 18650s and 21700s, which is what I've got installed now with the included uh, adapters. Total runtime here with this battery was just shy of 400 minutes. 99% of this time though, it was at 15% uh, of that relative output. Turbo output is good for just under a minute with this light and it continues to ramp down pretty quickly. Heat on this light, was surprising to me. 
I expected it to get quite hot based on other multiple emitter lights I have like the Firefly Z07. However, that isn't the case in my example. Um, and a little bit of a problem, I think, out of the box. Heat at one minute was 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Five minutes was uh, 83, and uh, 10 minutes was 82. The problem is that the uh, light starts to step down pretty much immediately. Uh, you can calibrate this light, and that should improve it. What I'll end up doing is cranking the heat uh, sensitivity way up here. So um, it should allow it to run brighter for longer. Low voltage protection kicked in at three volts. So UI on this light, this is using uh, Toy Keeper's Andrel UI. I've covered that before on my uh, Lumentop FW3A and my Lumentop EDC18. This is the same firmware if you've seen those videos. It's one of my favorites available. It has a ton of options uh, that commercial UIs don't typically include. By default, it comes in a ramping mode, which is what I have mine set in still. And you can see here, as I hold down, the light gets brighter, brighter, brighter. It clicks at top. I can double click to go to turbo at any time. I can click once again to go off. And when it's on, then I can also ramp down to get it at just my ideal brightness. Yeah, there's also a stepped mode that is available if you don't like the ramping. As I mentioned, the site's got thermal controls. You can configure beacon modes as well. It's got fun modes like candle mode, party mode, and lightning storm. And that's really fun with these uh, high output throwers, especially lightning mode. Put it in your bedroom or in a dark room and just kind of let it bounce off the ceiling. It's kind of fun. How practical these are really is one point somebody could argue. They're a little challenging to get to. This isn't a tactical UI because um, you've got to do a series of blinks to get to those strobes. Personally, that's fine for me. Those aren't modes that I use very often. So if I did need to get to them, I could easily look up the manual, figure it out. So recharging, as I mentioned, this light has USB-C here on the back and it only charges with a USB-A to C cable. No C to C cables work. Sadly, that's fairly common with a lot of these Chinese flashlights with USB-C at this point. Hopefully that'll be something that will cho change soon. Charging was reasonably fast. I charged that 5,200 milliamp hour keep power battery in three hours and 30 minutes with with a uh, max charge rate of 1.85 amp and the battery stopped charging at 4.19 volt. So for me, the pros are there are five colors of body available for this flashlight. It's available in aluminum, copper, brass as well. And there's three LED tints available. So something for everyone. I like that there's a high CRI option available with the 4,000 tint light. And it's got versatile battery options, uh, 21700, 26650, and 18650s all work and the spacer tubes are included. The cons for me are there's only support for USB A to C cable during charging. It doesn't work for a C to C cable. Uh, with great power and lumens come heat after you calibrate in my example. And the SST 20 LEDs in my example have a pretty green tint at lower outputs. So my conclusion is this is good competition for that Firefly Z07 and a pretty good value at the $60 mark for its normal price or $46 with my coupon in the description at the time of filming. I enjoy my secondaries on lights. They're not too bright here. I wish they were almost a little bit brighter, but they won't interfere with your sleep, which is nice. Overall, this is a pretty good value light, and hopefully Astrolux and other flashlight manufacturers will soon allow their USB-C lights to use USB-C to C cables. Make sure if you decide to pick this one up, take advantage of the color options here, both in body and LED tint. Let's support one less black flashlight on the market. Thanks guys for watching this video. If you've got any questions, please leave your comments in the description below and I'll do my best to uh, answer them. Again, check the description for any coupons I've got for this light. And I appreciate you liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and as always, catch you on the next one.